Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Arsene and this is the Dynamic Modeling of Cities channel 2019 and within this video it's a continuation from our last video within Typhlow and that was creations of particles and how to understand them and within this video we'll be continuing with that same string and also adding more to it by creating spline paths and also collision effects which we can utilize within our architectural research project to understand pathways and the velocity of their speed, understanding of their movement and using that as a way to pretty much showcase how they bounce off buildings and move around the map around Kieran Park. But in this case, we're just gonna use a couple cubes just to highlight the idea and how to do so. So we have the string on our Typhlo editor, which is open there, that window right here, followed by a 3ds Max window, which is a maximum viewport of our perspective. And what we're gonna highlight right now is the birth effect. We've highlighted at 200 within this string, followed by the speed being random horizontal, which is the direction the spheres will go into, as you see here, they'll go into that direction. From there, we have the sphere shapes, which are here. You put them as large dots, whatever you need. Doesn't really affect the outcome of this. But down here, as you got the bottom bar of what you can choose, you need to select send out. Once you have send out, you can actually add another figure to it. As you can see by turning on layers and turning them off, you can see different outcomes. So well, this is what it looks like right now. Moving from the center point on a horizontal plane outwards in a random direction. That is all. But if we activate event two, which will highlight our spline pathways, which what we've done here is just create a new spline from pressing that button there and leave it on trajectories, which is gonna be the points of direction that it will follow. You start to realize there's a blue line effect right after the red dots as it goes past, as you'll be able to see from this video playing. So by moving from one direction, it can randomly go out and they'll be able to see the actual effect of the lines and the trajectory of that and utilize that as a way to capture movements of a creature as it goes through a particular area. As we've created a spawn point for them and they will be able to spawn from there and then move out. And we can capture their movement through that area. The next aspect is adding another send out to event two and then creating event three. And event three, you'll be using a collision. So you need to have the collision object there. As you can see, we already have it in event three. Select two objects that you do have. In this case, we have box two and box one, as you can see from our 3D perspective and also our colors of the actual figures have changed just to highlight the new addition of what it's actually occurring in this figure. So with that, you can add the collision effect, pick those two objects, and then press pick and then add selected and it'll come up in this colliders function box right over here with the two box names right there. So you can remove them if you don't need them anymore, you can leave them there, it depends. Then you can change the figures here to increase radius of the collision, how many times it does collide with the object. If it's bouncing off multiple times, you can showcase that as well. We can leave it on collides, which is an unlimited amount of times it'll collide. And the bounce effect, you can leave it on the front faces, back faces of objects that you've selected, or put it on both, which we have done that. The bounce effect, you can increase that to maybe 60%, uh, and also the variation of that by 25%, so you get different bounce uh, directions for that as well. There's friction you can utilize as well, but I wouldn't use that too much unless you had a horizontal uh, surface that all your particles are going off as they're given birth and sped out in different right directions and the friction of the surface is slowing them down. But if that's not the case, I would not be focusing on that at all. From here, once you have that tree created or that chain reaction created within tire flow, all you need to do is press play and you'll be able to see the creation of this. Let's try to zoom into this. The creation of it as the green balls will hit the actual planes as we can see here and they'll just bounce off from there. We can show on a la um, lower number just to highlight how it's actually bouncing because we got two of them at once, it comes really hard to actually see it. So we'll play that again. And that's the idea. Your spline effects will turn off due to certain events overriding it, but you can turn this off again and then you'll get the spline effects and you'll see how it goes through the objects and highlight that too. So it just depends what your goal is. In our case, it's to highlight the movement of creatures and how they'll bounce off certain objects. And these are two ways that we can highlight that. And with combinations of that, we can move on to advanced techniques of highlighting the movements and also collisions within certain areas, being our prime goal, Kion Park. And that's how you understand how to create spine paths and collisions with In3DS Max using the TIE Flow plugin. And that is all for this video. I'll catch you guys later.